There are a lot of great reasons to get into kayaking or canoeing, but it's not all rainbows and sunsets. You know, there are, are some challenges involved with kayaking and canoeing, and one of the biggest challenges is getting your boat to the water. Transporting anything that's 10 to 18 feet in length is a real problem, and if you don't do it right, it can become a very serious problem, not only for you, but for the other people you encounter on the road. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about the best ways to transport your kayak. So there are four real ways to transport a kayak. You can rooftop it, put it on the top of uh, any type of vehicle, on racks or some type of rack. Number two, you can throw it in the bed of a pickup. Number three, you can use a kayak trailer or any type of trailer to trailer the boat to the water. And number four, well, if you can't do one, two, or three, then you get yourself an inflatable or a foldable kayak and you throw the thing in your trunk or the back of your vehicle and then you don't need to worry about transportation. So let's start with roof topping. So for most people, roof topping the kayak is the best option. Now, you have a couple of options. Ideally, your vehicle has a set of factory installed roof racks that are strong enough, that are high enough quality to take the kayak. But not many vehicles have that. And so you now have two options. You either have to go out and get a set of aftermarket roof racks, or at a minimum, you get these foam racks, something to protect your well, really to protect your vehicle from the kayak when it's on top. There's no doubt that uh, a set of quality roof racks is the best way to go. But the truth of the matter is roof racks, they're not cheap. You know, you can spend anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to well over a thousand dollars on a pair or a set of roof racks. For some people, for a lot of people, that's not even an option in that case foam blocks, these are your best friends. These are actually kayak carriers and they're a very affordable um, option to, to carry your kayak on the vehicle. And the way it works is that you're gonna actually attach these, tie them, strap them to the hull of your kayak. Then you can move this with the, the pads onto your vehicle and tie it down to the vehicle. So let's start by attaching these things to the kayak. There we go, the foam blocks are tied to the boat. I magically teleported this kayak on to the vehicle. I'll be honest, this is an 11 foot kayak. It's not a big kayak and it's only around 60, 65 pounds loaded. And that's a lot of kayak for just one person to move onto a vehicle. So that is one of the big barriers about rooftoping uh, a kayak is you really do need two people even to get the kayak on top. The idea, well, actually, before I get into how to tie it down, one thing to definitely note with these framed seats, and even with the, without the frame seats, if it's a good seat that can come off, take it off. It's just gonna catch wind and cause problems. The idea is to tie the kayak to the vehicle and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a strap all the way through through the two doors you got to open both doors and just put the strap right through and around in an ideal world i would love to tie it down with two straps one through the back doors and one through the front doors in this case i've got a moon roof or a sunroof on this vehicle here so i can't have a, a pad up here. I, I can't tie it down close enough there. So I'm just gonna have one strap going through the, through the back doors of this thing. I'll tie it down snug as, as snug as I can and we'll go from there. All right, so that's already, that's pretty solid. Um, but 
it's still not what I'd call safe. You can't expect that to do the trick. What you really need to do when you're car topping a, a roof topping a kayak is tie bow and stern lines to hold those. That stops it from shooting off like a torpedo if you ever hit something or hit the brakes really hard. Uh, that rope will just stop it from shooting forward. So we're going to put a bow line on this thing. So in setting up your bow line, the trick is you have to find an anchor point under the car that's solid, that's metal and not plastic. Now, if you simply can't find a secure point under there to attach to, you're not uh, totally screwed. <laughs> Companies like Yakima here, they have created solutions because you're not the only one. And there's solutions that create an anchor point underneath your hood. So if you're in that unfortunate situation, don't bail on the bow line. Um, you know, check out one of those, one of the, the higher end manufacturers and uh, car rack manufacturers and they will have a solution for you. Now, I'm just tying off the loose end here and something to note with what I've done here, it may not look pretty, but you can see this strap has some twists to it, not a, just a couple of twists to it. That wasn't because I screwed up, that was actually by design. Um, when you put twists in a strap, it helps reduce the amount of buzzing that your strap creates when you're driving down the road. So it might not look as nice as a nice flat strap, but it sure is quieter. You do the same thing on the back side, and then we're good to go. Poof! Just like that, more magic just happened here. I somehow removed the foam pieces and attached a roof rack to this vehicle. Incredible, aren't I? No, actually pretty cool system here uh, on this car where um, the roof rack stows, but then you can deploy it. So uh, we did a quick changeover. It's on here now and on roof racks that are designed to take up to 150 pounds of weight. And so at 60 pounds, we're good to go here. I really wouldn't trust these with two kayaks. I don't know, well, not two kayaks like this. 150 is pushing it. But anyway, let's, let's take a quick look how to strap this sucker down on roof racks. All right, so pretty straightforward. I have to do the same thing up here, um, but what I'm gonna do this time is I'm going to use a rope to show you if you don't have cam straps, how to do it with the rope. So uh, all I've got here is a piece of rope with, I put a loop in one end and that's going underneath the bar. I pass the other end through, throw her over. Let's go tie it up. All right, now when tying uh, a boat down with rope, there's lots of different ways you could do it, but I believe hands down the best way to do it is with a trucker's hitch. And the, actually I've done a video about the trucker's hitch, so you, you should probably check that video out rather than, me, than having me go into depth about it right now but the simple version is you do a loop give it an extra twist or two and i'm going to pass the rope through that loop and now i'm going to go i'll go this way doesn't really matter just easier for me under the bar back through that loop i've created and now it's almost like a little block and tackle. It's a pulley system. And then I'm just using a half hitch to, uh, to tie this rope up. I mean, really just getting rid of this, all this extra rope. This rope's a little bit long for the job. All right, so the boat is now pretty well attached to the vehicle, but there's no backup here. The backup is the bow and stern lines that we're gonna tie adds another level of security and it's pretty, it's pretty much a must do when you're tying a boat on the roof. Now, that might be hard to see, but what's happening is the boat's tied so hard down onto the roof rack that it's actually warping, it's bending over the rack itself. And, you know, if you leave the kayak on too long like this, that can become a bit of a problem. 
most of the time, 99 times out of 100, the boat will pop back to its original shape with a bit of time and sitting in the sun. But you really don't want to have the, the boat pinched down and wrapped around a bar too long. There are some ways to get around that though, and it's especially important if A, your boat's gonna spend a lot of time on the roof, or B, you've got a fragile boat. You've got a composite boat, a fiberglass or Kevlar boat, or something that deserves to be treated a little bit better, and you're not just hoping it will pop back into, into its original shape. So let's take a, a quick look at some of the things you can do to prevent that. So one option to avoid having the hull get warped on the bottom is getting something like a kayak stacker. There are a bunch of accessories for roof racks that you can get for kayaks specifically. And this is one of them. The kayak sits on, a, on its edge here in this cradle. You get two of them, one on each rack, and they, uh, they stand vertically. That way it's actually easier to get more than one kayak onto uh, a roof rack system. Another easy option to protect your kayak is to use these kayak carriers. They have a slot already cut into them, so they fit right over bars. Now, your kayak has a nice soft bed to lie on. A third option are some kayak cradles like these guys right here, which provide your kayak with a nice big hug. Well, that's about all I have to say about roof topping. There's actually a lot to say, but let's move on to tying a boat down in a truck bed. So pickup trucks can be awesome boat haulers, which is one of the primary reasons I have a pickup. What makes them such great boat haulers is the fact that they're easy to load. They're low, you can, one person can just slide a boat in, even a very heavy boat without too much hassle whatsoever. Now, there are a few things to know about tying boats into a pickup, and let's take a quick look at some of those things, starting with the length of your kayak. As a rule, the kayak needs to be shorter than twice the length of your bed plus your tailgate. For example, mine is seven feet with the tailgate down. I don't like to transport kayaks this way that are any longer than 12 and a half feet. And even at 12 and a half feet, it gets a little, uh, it's not ideal. This is an 11 foot kayak and it fits fantastic in here. So let's look at what I do to tie, assuming you have a short kayak that meets those needs, let's look at how I've tied these things in. Then we're gonna talk about how to deal with extra long kayaks. The big challenge when tying a, a boat into a pickup is there's a lot of space in the back of a pickup. And so this boat is gonna wanna move around a lot. And if I just take a rope or strap, which I've got, and now it's tied to that corner, go through the grab loop, and if that I, I then tie off to this corner, pull it tight, okay. It's now, it's not gonna shoot out the back of the boat, with the back of the pickup, it's, it's held there, but it is going to be able to bounce all over the place very easily. Now that's not ideal, far from ideal. And so we need to stop that from happening. So what we're gonna do to stop the boat from moving around is we're gonna put the front of the kayak into one corner of the bed up front. Now I'm gonna start from the, the same side that the bow is on. I'm gonna take one rope or cam strap and tie it to the the bow some type of hard anchored point not a flimsy bungee that's not going to do the trick to a, the grab loop or some something hard that was is going to hold and i'm going to tighten it up fairly well and then i'm going to do the same thing from this corner to this side and that will do the trick but what i like to do which i'm going to do show you right now is i like taking these cam strap, these uh, cam buckles on a loop. You put the loop through the grab loop, pass the cam buckle through, bam, now I've got an anchor. I do the same thing at this corner here. So I've got an anchor. So now my one cam strap, which is tied from that corner, will come 
through this cam buckle. I'll pull it tight, boom. Now I'll pull it through this one and pull it tight as well. Oh, there, I'll flip. Boom. And then I'm gonna tie this off, just get rid of the, make sure that extra rope doesn't go flapping around. Now it can't slide all around the bed of the, uh, of the truck. But now there's one more thing that I need to do. It's pretty secure now, but pickups, beds can bounce pretty aggressively uh, when going to hitting bumps on the road. And when that happens, especially when the kayak is a little bit longer, it can rock this way. We want to stop that. In particular, we want to stop the front of the kayak from rocking up and potentially smashing the, wind, uh, the back windshield. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie a rope across the front that stops that front end from coming up. So all I'm doing here is going through the loop, the, the grab handle, through the anchor. This can be a cam strap or a rope. I've done a trucker's hitch here that I can pull tight and tie it off and there we go. Now this boat cannot lift up. It's being held down and this boat isn't going anywhere. But what if you're dealing with a longer boat? Let's take a look at how to deal with that. Pow! How's that for movie magic? Now we have a new kayak in the back of the, of the truck. What I wanted to show you was this tailgate extender here. And basically what this thing does, it goes right into the, the hitch and it gives an additional, probably about two feet past the original tailgate. So now I have five and a half, maybe a foot and a half. So seven feet, nine feet roughly of distance. Uh, so this is gonna be great for pretty much any recreational kayak um, up to a recreational touring kayak you know to about a 15 foot boat after that a sea kayak a 16 to 18 foot kayak you know what this is really you're going to end up it's going to be too long it's going to be a little sketchy and in that case you're best off going car topping uh, or at least on a rack system um, or with a trailer <laughs> Did I say trailer? I just happen to have a couple of trailers here. Kayak and canoe trailers in particular. Uh, but you know, these are specifically designed for kayaks and canoes. These are a couple of Yakima trailers, the Easy Rider and the Rack and Roll. I've had these both for a couple of years now. The Rack and Roll for about five or six years. And it's done many, 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 many miles with me. What's great about a trailer is they're very easy to load. You don't really have to lift boats up very high at all. You can load these as a single person. Um, this one here, obviously, has got two layers. It can take two sets of boats. This is for a bigger trip, and it's a heavier trailer. This one is like a normal set of racks on top of your vehicle, a nice wide one at least. And uh, you can take a couple of kayaks on this thing. This has been my go-to trailer and what I love about it is that it's super light. So it actually acts like a like a kayak cart for me too. So what I'll often do is I'll get to a put-in and leave the kayak. If I can't drive any closer, I'll leave the kayak on the, uh, the trailer and just walk the trailer where I need to go right up to the edge of the water or right down the, the boat launch and, and boom. And then just walk the trailer back when I've, once I've launched the kayaks. Uh, now, if you're carrying long kayaks, like sea kayaks, something to keep in mind is that the tongue needs to be extra long. Otherwise, if the kayak's centered on the trailer, the bow can be too far into the back of your vehicle. And when, as soon as you start turning, you'll actually, your, the back of your vehicle will hit the bow of the kayak. If you're gonna have really long kayaks, like sea kayaks, you better make sure before you buy the trailer that the tongue is long enough to do the job. Since we're talking about all the different ways to transport kayaks, I realized it'd be foolish if I didn't mention this new rack system that I got for my truck. 
This is Yakima's overall HD rack system. I'll preface this by saying I'm not sponsored by Yakima. I've got a lot of Yakima stuff because I've, I've been a fan of their stuff for a very long time. They make great stuff and you know any of the high quality uh, rack manufacturers like Thule, Yakima and Malone and Swagman's to name a few, they make great stuff and they're the ones doing the R&D and figuring out cool new uh, products to service us. So I like supporting them, but you do pay for it. They, they make quality stuff and you pay for it. This thing is pretty sweet. This is a Mac Daddy rack system, um, but you pay for it. It's 1500 bucks. Uh, it's quick on, quick off, heavy duty in that this, the capacity is around four or 500 pounds. I think they say 400 off-road and 500 highway. So it, you know, not, not many rack systems can carry that much weight. Uh, it changes heights. It does, you know, just that for me, the fact that it's on and off so quick is, is huge. But what you can see what it does here is it allows me to put a couple of kayaks underneath. I could put a box on top here. I could put a, a cargo, um, one of those uh, cargo holds. I could, you know, put more kayaks up here. This would be a great place to transport sea kayaks that would be too long sticking out the back of the pickup so it adds more flexibility but heck you could buy two kayaks for the price of this rack system so it's not for everybody that's about it that's a lot of information about transporting kayaks uh, and if none of these techniques, the roof racks, the uh, pickup bed, the trailer, if none of these really are relevant to you or are a possibility to you, then check out the folding or inflatable kayaks because you don't need any of this stuff. And that's why folding and inflatable kayaks are gaining uh, in popularity so much. But the, but the flip side to that is when you have a good, when you have a pickup, when you have a good rack system, when you have a trailer, it's not just for your kayaks. I mean, if you look at it as being, hey, this is how much does it cost for every time I go paddling? Well, it's you know, it's a little bit overwhelming, but it's more than that. These these systems are great for if your lifestyle is uh, involves things like biking and going on road trips and and ha where or ski trips when uh, you know or just moving doing home renovations and moving stuff around. A good set of racks, it goes a long way. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as long as it might be. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already because we have lots more shorter videos coming your way.